Blackfoot Communications is committed to supporting Bozeman businesses. From intelligent network solutions like SD-WAN to fast and reliable fiber-based services, Blackfoot delivers innovative ways for your business to succeed. Blackfoot Communications. Connect to more. Hi guys, welcome. Thanks for jumping on. We'll uh, I'll go ahead and let Coach Vegan um, make introductions of the coordinators and maybe give a staff rundown. And then once he's done, we'll uh, put Coach House right on and then Coach Banks. So Coach Vegan, it's all yours. How's everybody doing today? Doing good. Doing good. 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 Doing great. I, I'm not on a hot seat today, which is which is good. But I I know we rolled the staff out from a press release perspective on on Friday and we do have everybody here in Bozeman now. So wanted to give you guys an opportunity to, to speak with the coordinators and just wanted to, to go through the staff again. Um, you know, offensively, we were able to keep uh, Brian Armstrong, Nate Potter and uh, Jimmy Beal in their same positions, coaching the O-line tight ends and running backs respectively. Uh, we moved Justin Udy from quarterbacks uh, and he was a coordinator to passing game coordinator and receivers. Defensively, we were able to keep uh, Bobby Daly and Kyle Reisinger in similar roles. Um, and then special teams wise, uh, BJ Robertson will continue to, to lead up the special teams. Additionally, uh, BJ will be the associate head coach while that mainly pertains uh, to high school relations. And Bobby Daly will be the assistant head coach, which will primarily pertain to alumni relations. Um, New, new staff members, uh, I know you've been made aware of. Taylor Housewright will coach our quarterbacks and coordinate on offense. Uh, Freddie Banks will coach our secondary and be the defensive coordinator. And then Sean Howe will be our defensive run game coordinator and coach the front, be the defensive line coach. So, so couldn't be more excited to have the staff together now. Uh, we're working feverishly to, to get them all ingrained, first of all, of, of knowing our players, how our players will fit together, uh, but then obviously getting the schemes on both sides of the ball um, sorted out. And, and you know, we're, we're about four weeks out from spring ball, so a big four weeks ahead of us to, to again, get with our players and get the, the schemes um, put in on both sides of the football. So I don't know if anybody's got any questions for me. Um, if you do, I'll certainly answer those, and otherwise I'll turn it over to Taylor and Freddie. Uh, let's see. Does anyone have anything? Colton, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'll just jump in with one. You know, yeah, obviously you've. Uh, I, I believe, yeah, you, you've you've you knew both of these core new coordinators before. How much did that kind of help having that familiarity, and how much did that play into your decision? Well, that was big. I, I think uh, you know, in, in taking on this role of head coach, I want to be the head coach. I, I want to have guys on either side that I trust um, to run. Uh, not in those those uh, those rooms from a coach perspective, but it lead those men. And you know the experience I had with with Taylor was back in eight, eighteen um, while we were at Wyoming together, and then he's been able to to branch off and work with Coach Moorhead the last couple of years, both at Mississippi State and Oregon. Freddie, I knew as a player back in uh, the uh, late part of you know what it was two thousand nine, two thousand ten, um, and really had a, a great deal of respect for for what he did as a player. And then I've been able to follow him uh, through his coaching career. And, you know, that familiarity, I, I guess, just with both them as people, but then also the, the schemes they intend to run uh, was a huge part of why uh, they're in those positions they are. Coulter? Yeah. Hi, Brent. I got two for you. One, um, how much do you expect the overall schemes to change uh, compared to what they might have been? I mean, obviously, everybody wants to put their own uh, imprint on it. And two, what's that dynamic like with two new coordinators in the fold, but also a staff that largely knows the roster pretty darn well? Well, going back to the, the, the first question, I think well, there'll be some subtle tweaks. I think uh, for the fan in the stands, I, I think generally we'll look uh, very much the same. I, I know defensively will be more of a four down permanent scheme as opposed to that multiple front scheme that they ran. Uh, but I think generally speaking, the schemes will be very comparable. Um, you know, having, having a mix of, of three new coaches, but then the, um, the, the seven remaining coaches, I think is a real good blend. I, you said it. I, I think those seven guys, um, a lot of the reason that uh, 
do we want to move forward with them is they, they know our guys extremely well. There's a passion for our players. There's a passion for the Montana State football. And that was evident as I sat down with them. And they're all good. They're all good coaches. And, and you know, collaborating um, what they've done here, um, what I've experienced, and then what uh, our three new coaches will bring to the table. You know, I'm lo really looking forward to that blend coming together and, and you know, playing the type of football that um, – puts us in position to, to win games, win championships. I'm good. Excited to be here. Uh, hi, Ta yeah, hi right. Taylor. Uh, Col Coulter Nuana is from uh, ESPN Montana as well as Skyline Sports. Uh, welcome to Montana. Can you Thank tell you. us, just, uh, just take us through the timeline of, of this. Obviously, you worked with Coach Vegan at, at Wyoming. So when did this first land kind of on your radar? And what are your just initial thoughts about being the offensive coordinator at Montana State? Um, well, obviously, very, very excited. This has been a very successful program. Um, obviously, in the fat past five years, they've won a lot of games, got some guys playing in the NFL. And obviously, it's beautiful uh, to be out here by the mountains. I can't uh, – it's pretty awesome. But, um, you know, I was with Coach Vegan in 2018 um, and then got an opportunity to go to Mississippi State with Joe Moorhead, um, kind of see how, obviously, two different structures offensively um, Wyoming and then kind of what Coach Moore has done at Penn State, Mississippi State, and now at Oregon. Got to follow him to Oregon. Um, so kind of happened quick. You know, I know Coach Vegan was um, wanting to be a head coach eventually, and he's been very successful. Um, and kind of have, you know, he called me and asked me if I'd be interested. Um, and obviously I said yes. You know, I wanted to talk with Coach Moorhead. Obviously, you know, he's a mentor of mine as well. Um, and um, he said, yeah, it's a no brainer. Great school, great guy, um, good head coach. Um, so I'd say a few days before probably he even got the job, you know what I mean, is when I kind of found out about it. So it happened pretty quick, but um, I trust him. Um, I think he's going to do a heck of a job. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing in this profession is working for people you trust and, and you're willing to kind of go to battle per se with every week. What are just your general uh, offensive philosophies? Uh, score a lot of points is number one. Um, but kind of how we get that, um, obviously, this, this program and this school has been uh, hung their hat on being physical, and that's what we're going to do. Um, regardless of what we do offensively, you have to win the line of scrimmage. And I think that's true at any level of football, um, whether you're going down to middle school, peewee, high school, low-end college, uh, high-end college, or in the NFL. Okay, you got to be physical at the line of scrimmage. Um, and we've been able to do that. They've done a heck of a job recruiting. We've got good players. Um, and I think our O-line has a chance to, to be really, really good this year. Um, outside of that, we want to get the ball to different people, okay, distribute it around the field, um, keep the defense running sideline to sideline instead of just uh, straight ahead in front of them. Um, I think the biggest thing in college football today is tackling, right, with all the things going on. And um, you want to try to get as many one-on-one -on -one tackles as possible and, and make sure they are a defense that I think coach will say too, a good defense tackles well and a good defense pursues the ball. And we're going to challenge that every week to make sure that they are doing that. Um, outside of that, you want to be the aggressor on offense. You don't want to be sitting on your heels. You want to take your shots when they present themselves. Um, if you're going to run the ball, I think you got to have, you got to play action it, okay? Um, and, and change tempos. You know, I think that's another big thing is, is having the ability to slow it down versus speed it up. You know what I mean? I think that's something some people go one tempo. Um, I'd like to say we're going to be multiple um, and we're basically going to do what we're good at, what our players can do versus what the defense is poor at. It comes down to that, um, you know, and, and hopefully we can coach our guys up well enough to learn the system. It's going to be the same things. We're going to run the ball. We're going to take shots and we're going to spread it out. Um, terminology might change a little bit, but our kids are amazing and hungry and want to learn um, the culture that has been built here. Um, but we're not coming in and changing anything. We're just trying to help make it better, kind of bring some new ideas. Um, obviously, offensively, we've got our staff. Um, most of it is guys that have been here, and that's been a huge blessing. We spent an entire day just going over the depth chart and the roster, um, and that was huge help for me to kind of catch me up on what guys can do, uh, where we need to improve, and what we've done well. This day and age in college football, everybody runs so many elements of everything, right? I mean, there's not really, you know, you, you can kind of run, you can have sort of a basic identity, but you can implement all sorts of stuff, whether it's RPO or option or whatever. So how do you go about like making your identity? Is it, is it just personnel based then when you're kind of trying to craft your scheme each season? 
Yeah, I think it is. I think you have a system that can go in different directions. You know, I think good offenses, you look at the top five offenses every year, pretty much they get their best players the ball, you know, and they do things either if their quarterback's a runner, they run their quarterback, but their quarterback's a passer, they try to protect them, let them throw. Um, I don't think you want to, you, in today's game, recruiting is national at whatever level you're at. So you just want to get the best players you can get and then have a system in place that can kind of um, tailor it to those guys. If you got speed receivers, big receivers, running quarterback, throwing quarterback, speed back, strong back, um, O-line, can you get guys that can um, run people over? Or are they pass protectors? What is that? You know, Again, I don't think we want to hamstrung ourselves from recruiting. It's already hard enough. Um, so get the best players you can get and kind of have a system that'll fit to them. And, and last question for me, how do you hope to blend some of the influences that you've had uh, into, into now your first offensive coordinator job? And how did guys like uh, Coach Morehouse uh, influence you in the past? Oh, yeah. I mean, I can. I had five offensive coordinators when I was in college playing, and each of them are pretty successful. Um, Matt LaFleur, who's obviously the head coach of the Green Bay Packers. Uh, Joey Lynch, who's now at Vanderbilt. Mike Bath, who's at co-offensive coordinator at Western Michigan. Um, Jeff Caskell, Jeff Castle, who's an Indiana State offensive coordinator. Um, Tom Stacy, who's still at Ashton University, but he was Charlie Fry's uh, quarterback coach at Akron back in the day. Um, and then obviously um, my experience is coaching with Chuck Martin, who was at Notre Dame, and I GA'd for him. And then going to Joe Fenchum, who coaches at Wittenberg, has been an O-line guy and won a bunch of games. Back to Ashton for Lee Owens, who I played for, but then coached for, and kind of see the pro style system that he had. Um, and the simplicity at quarterback, you know, that he created um, all the way now to Wyoming and with Coach Vegan. Obviously, we know his track record with quarterbacks um, and his detail and passion for the position and kind of the things we've done um, at Wyoming all the way to Coach Morehead, who I've recently been with, who has uh, been a huge influence, kind of opened my eyes because I've been in the pro style system and his was the spread system. So um, I think you get a piece. I think that's the beautiful part of college coaching when you bounce around you get a little piece of everybody you know what I mean and kind of see how you can blend that together that's the fun part I guess that's the nerdy part that I enjoy and why I stare at my computer my wife calls and bothers me all the time um, but um, I think the best part is taking all that that you've gotten just like an artist would right you know a painter they, they see different people um, and kind of piecing that together to create your own little style within the people that you have and your players, you know, it's not about me. It's about this school. It's about this team and it's about the players, but hopefully my experiences can help those guys accomplish their goals and the school accomplish their goals and coach vegan um, by being able to blend it all together um, and, and, and kind of venture out towards what they do good or do well, excuse me, bad English. Appreciate you, man. Look forward to meeting you. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. Thank you. Alex Eshelman, you're up. All right, coach. First of all, congratulations. I'm Alex. I work for ABC Fox here in town. Um, and I know that the fans are super excited about hope or hopeful, I should say, about maybe having a more consistent quarterback situation uh, go on for Montana State. What is your philosophy behind the quarterback position and, and how do you plan to kind of run with it here at Montana State? Yeah, I think it's pretty simple for me. Um, throw it to the open guy and don't turn it over. Um, that's kind of our philosophy in the quarterback room right now. We've got some really good athletes, and I think the longer you hold on to the ball, um, the worse, you know, and, and, and I kind of talk to the quarterbacks. I think don't overcomplicate a simple game that you guys have been playing since you were in peewee football, right? What did everybody do in peewee football? They got the ball to the best player. Well, that's all we're going to do. We're going to get it to them as soon as possible um, and let that guy be an athlete. Typically at quarterback, we're not the – swiftest of foot at times. That's why we play quarterback. Normally we're thinkers. Um, so let's get the ball out of our hands. Let's stay ahead of the defense, um, have high efficiency throws. Okay. Um, and let, let, let the tailbacks, let the receivers do all the work, right? That's why they get paid too, is because um, they can make people miss. Okay. Protect ourselves, especially up front. I think any efficient pass game starts with the offensive line, right? You don't have miscues. You're always sliding the protection in the right place. You're always uh, have enough guys for what the defense is bringing. You know, um, I, I try to simplify it as best as possible. Um, and, and sometimes it is that simple throw to the open guy. You know, I kind of have a philosophy. We have five eligibles every play. And at some point, I don't care if there's five Patrick Petersons out there playing man coverage. At some point, we know where we're going. 
one of those guys is going to be open. It's the quarterback's job to figure out when and where uh, and get it to him accurately. And, uh, you know, we've talked to Coach Vegan just in the past couple of weeks of how, how, you know, his daily routine. What has it been like for you so far in your daily routine of kind of getting acclimated here? Yeah, uh, I haven't seen much of the town. I mean, I see the mountains and it's beautiful, but pretty much now it's just getting with the staff and, and meeting the players and um, kind of building it and making sure we're getting ready for spring ball, keeping it one day at a time. I think sometimes at night I venture out and start thinking about other things, but um, like my wife says, just 24 hours at a time and um, you won't kind of lose your mind a little bit. So right now it's just getting to know the players. They're stopping in all the time, hanging out. I mean, that's the best part of coaching college football is um, – being around those guys and having an impact and just seeing their personalities and trying to blend all those personalities. Um, but mainly right now with the staff is just kind of building the system and, and, and teaching the, the, the staff that's been here and them teaching me as well things that they've done that we can carry over. Because um, again, it isn't like we're changing things. They've been very successful. So kind of blending all of that um, kind of takes up most of the day right now, along with watching our guys, um, watching our guys come in and, and communicate with them and just get to know and play catch up on my end a little bit. Awesome, Coach. Thanks. Congrats. No problem. Thank you. John Miller, go ahead. Hey, Coach, you talked about breaking down the rosters. Who are some guys who have already stuck out to you when you're watching film and stuff like that? Um, well, obviously, I think we all can agree we have a pretty good running back. You know what I mean? And, and I can't really pick one guy out. I think the staff did a great job just kind of telling everybody's skill sets. Um, I think that's what you, is unique on offense is we have – a little bit of everything, you know what I mean? And I think all the quarterbacks bring their own little skill set. Um, all the tailbacks, we've got some young guys, we got to see what happens with them. Um, um, and the receivers, I think they're excited, you know what I mean? We've got some guys, I walked into the weight room, I'm like, oh my gosh, um, maybe we'll just throw a Hail Mary every play. We got some long dudes. Eventually, you're going to catch them. Even if you complete 50%, it'll be a lot of yards. But um, yeah, I, I think, I don't know if I can single out one guy. Um, you know, the other part is the O-line. I thought they were impressive looking at them. we got some big kids that have played a lot of football and are tough. You know, I think that's the big thing for me. I think that being here in Montana, the state of Montana, Montana State, um, you got to be tough. You know, everybody in the country thinks about this, this place. You think, oh, they got a bunch of tough guys. And I really think we do. You know, I mean, that we're going to hang our hat on that because at the end of the day, it's a physical game. Um, we're not playing soccer. Sorry for soccer fans out there. But um, football is a physical game. If you can't be physical, it doesn't matter what you do. And on offense and coach will get crucified if we don't ask this what do you think of the cat cruise rivalry uh it's pretty awesome um uh it is very very serious which i love um i grew up in ohio so you always had the ohio state michigan um uh it, it's right up there with it you know what i mean and i think it's pretty neat for the state um to be that close together and have that big a rivalry um and, and we're very very excited to compete in it and hopefully um, when we play them, that we fill a stadium with Bobcat fans. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Blackfoot Communications is committed to supporting Bozeman businesses from intelligent network solutions like SD WAN to fast and reliable fiber based services. Blackfoot delivers innovative ways for your business to succeed. Blackfoot Communications, connect to more. Uh, Colton Poole, go ahead. Hey, Colton Poole, Bozeman Chronicle. Uh, nice to virtually meet you. Hopefully we all meet yeah. you in person in time. Oh, yeah, man. Um, so, you know, you touched on this a little bit, but I'm wondering if you could elaborate more on the quarterback kind of personnel and your, your thoughts on, you know, because you mentioned that they all kind of bring different skill sets. So maybe what, would, what is your sort of approach when you first get here when you look at that room and, and what are your thoughts on them? Well, I think for one thing, sometimes when you bring in a new offensive coordinator for the kids, it's, um, kind of a fresh start, right? You know, I like to go into spring ball when I'm at a new job and not make any assumptions. You know, their passes are passed, but I'm seeing them for the first time. Uh, so to be honest with you, I haven't watched a lot of those guys play and I don't intend to, so I don't have any unbiased opinions from what's happened in the past. I want them to go into spring one, every single quarterback on the roster, um, and I want them to compete and show me what they can do. And that doesn't mean trying to throw a touchdown every play. And that doesn't mean trying to shy away and just trying not to make a turnovers. I need them to play ball, right? Um, and, and I'll teach them, but they have to play freely for me to coach them. They get outside of playing freely um, and start worrying about who's behind them, who's in front of them, or, or not turning it over or trying to make too many plays. That's when you start playing bad at quarterback. You know, I think we can all agree 
you got to take what the defense gives you. You look at Tom Brady, what he's done, his his path. He's never done anything outside of it, right? I mean, he's one. He's the greatest quarterback of all time, um, and we saw saw what he looked like at the combine, right? So, the job of a quarterback is to be a leader, um, not take negative plays, and run the offense, right? Um, so, from what those guys, there's mul many, many, many ways to do that. Um, so, spring one, I think I'm more excited just to see those guys play and see what they can do. You know, what I mean, excited for them that it's kind of a a restart button, especially everybody on offense, you know. Um, you know, I think sometimes as kids you can kind of um, – we're, we're hard on them in sports and college football. You know, the mental side of things, I think we don't look at that sometimes when a kid's like, you know, especially as fans, you're trying to tear apart a kid, and at the end of the day he's 19 years old, you know what I mean, trying to be around his peers and do things. So um, this is a fresh start, and I'm excited um, for the first practice in, in this spring ball and see where it goes with these guys. And, you know, second question for me, you mentioned how you don't intend to come here and, you know, blow everything up and, and change things drastically. But you did mention, I guess, some some maybe small terminology differences. I'm curious how much easier that makes it for players who, you know, maybe, you know, you're trying to do the same things, but the terminology, like you said, may be a little different as you're transitioning to a new staff. Yeah, I mean, I think ultimately, um we like to think that we're really smart as football coaches, but ultimately we coach football. Um, so I think some guys try to make it really, really complicated and it's not, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, um, the terms for the most part kind of overlap in football. And I wish there was one just, cons you know, some, you had to use this in the NCAA football, every formation was called this or whatever, uh, but it's not, but kids do a great job. You know, that age range from 18 to 23 years old, I think they do a good job with terminology and, and remembering things. I know when I was in college, I typically didn't remember the day before, so I think I could start over with a new offense um, and, and just kind of pick up on it. You know, it's fun for them. They're into it, especially at a school like this where they've won. So changing terminology and stuff, it's not as complicated as, you may, as, it, as it may seem, you know, and especially for me. I mean, um, if I want to stack the receivers to the left, I'm going to say stack left, right? It's not, it's not that I'm not going to come up with some fancy word. If I want to move this guy, I'm going to tell him, whatever position he is, I'm going to say move, you know what I mean? So we'll make it very simple. And um, the way I look at it, if I'm confused, then they're probably confused. So it better be really, really simple for me uh, for them to pick up on it. And obviously some of those terms we're going to keep that they've been doing where there is overlap because I can learn it. Right. Um, but for the most part, it's uh, just a communication, a different language per se. All right. That's all I got. Thanks again. Yeah. No problem. Ashley Washburn, you're up. Hey, Coach, Ashley Washburn from KVZK. Welcome to Bozeman. Just kind of one two-part question from me. You had mentioned being able to sit down with the coaches and go through the depth charts and kind of get to know these players, but where are you at maybe sitting down with them actually in the quarterback's room or just kind of getting to know them personally? And then second, um, what does kind of your four weeks look like heading up to spring ball and kind of maybe getting your offense together as much as you can before then? Yeah, um, well, typically during the day, I don't get much work done because players are in or out, stopping in, which is which I love and I want. I want them to come in and a, a meaningful conversation is better than anything else I would be doing sitting on a computer. Um, so I spend a lot of the day doing that, players in and out and getting to know them, asking about their family, where they're from, what's their background been. Um, um, so I think that's huge. You know what I mean? I think whenever you want to coach someone hard and you do care about them, they understand it's coming from a good place and you're trying to coach them hard to make them better and progress their life in a positive way. So I think first off, you have to build those relationships and not be fake about it, but it be real um, and, and care about the kids. Again, I don't have kids, my wife and I don't right now. Um, so I love being around them, you know. Um, the second part to your question, kind of getting ready for the four weeks leading up, really it's just about kind of putting the system together, which we're close, right? What are we going to use? Kind of having a um, a, a big plan, formations, motions, run game, pass game, all that kind of stuff, right? And then we look at, okay, now how are we going to teach that? Okay, so we, I think we get a couple hours a week with the kids kind of leading up to spring ball, but then looking at it in a spring ball standpoint, okay, we have whatever, how many practices you have, let's break it up into seven installs, okay? So what are those seven installs um, going to get accomplished? Is it too much kind of kind of picking apart, just like a teacher would in the classroom, um, kind of their teaching progression, right? Um, and then 
what are the ways to teach them? Video, paper, walkthroughs, those kind of things. You know, doing as much as that, I think you got to take it. It's got to be on paper first, then it's got to be on video. Then you got to teach it. You got to have them teach it. And then you got to walk through it. And then you got to drill it. And then you got to uh, practice it in a team setting. That way, when you get into a game, you've done all these different methods where you don't have to think and you can just roll with it. So right now, again, putting the system together to break it down, then it's breaking that entire system down. What do we want to do in spring? And then what do we want to do in August camp? Then it's from there. It's like, okay, how many installs do we want? What are we going to do? Install one, install two, install three. And you're always tweaking and adjusting. Again, us coaches like to think we're really smart um, and mad scientists of some sort. So um, we're always doing something, but ultimately it's what, what your kids can learn and um, you can teach. And then kind of bouncing off of John's question about the Cat Grizz rivalry, that one of the great things about, you know, Bobcat Nation is the fans. So, you know, you've only been here about a week, but what's kind of your first impression of the fan base here and how um, important Bobcat football is to them? Yeah, and being they able love football. To yeah. Yeah, they love football. And I saw some videos. I guess there was a the um, Miracle in Missoula, I think it was, right? Uh, on the one yard line, they fumbled and we picked it up. I got kind of the breakdown of that whole setting and watched some YouTube clips and uh, internet clips of, that was pretty amazing. Crowd going crazy. Yeah, it was exciting. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Welcome to Bozeman. Thank you. Uh, let's go last to Eddie Messel. Go ahead, Eddie. Yeah, how you doing, Coach? I only got one for you. Um, Eddie Messel here um, with NBC Montana and Bozeman. Um, I know Coach Vegan told us he was able to get on a collective Zoom earlier in the week or last week um, with the incoming 2021 recruits. I'm just curious if you've gotten the chance to speak with any of the, uh, those guys coming in on the offensive side of the ball and if you have any kind of excitement of uh, if you've gotten the chance to see any of them coming in. Yeah, I mean, I won't really say individual names, but um, got to talk to some of them. I still got a lot to call, actually, and that's kind of that's on my to-do list tonight is to give, try to give all the offensive guys a phone call or FaceTime. I'm kind of a big FaceTime person these days. The Zoom kind of changed. It was way more personal, so now I'm just going to FaceTime instead of call. Um, and I think high school kids like that. They're, they're always on their phone and texting. So, um, But, yeah, I'm going to talk to them tonight. Talk to a couple of them. Super excited. Like I said, I think the staff, the staff has done a great job recruiting obviously, um, and we're going to try to continue that. Um, so very excited about the future with those guys. I hope they're excited um, and, and to get here and work and, and kind of continue that legacy of this university. You know what I mean? And I think the university sells itself. Um, so regardless of who the, the head coach is, um, as long as you work your butt off in recruiting and um, build relationships, I think the school does the selling and the, and the, the, the fans and the town do a lot of the selling. You're not just, we're just not recruiting as coaches. The whole town's recruiting, um, which, which is pretty unique um, to happen. And I, and I think, you know, this place is growing, you know what I mean? Even during COVID, I think the university grew. Um, this town's growing, this area's growing. So it's going to be a very exciting place the next five and 10 years um, to play college football for a young man. Especially, again, I keep going back to these mountains. It's pretty amazing. It's, pretty, it's, it's getting beautiful out. I can't wait till the sun comes out. I bet the summer's unreal. The summers are definitely nice. I spent my first one last year, and it was, it was great. So, but that's all I got. Thanks, Coach. Welcome. Yeah, if any of you yeah, guys have like a, 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 a free pass free to pass Big Sky, that'd be awesome too. I looked up the prices; it's, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. <laughs> what you make about a ten, right, guys? We'll we'll yeah. say thanks to Coach Housewright, and we'll slide uh, Coach Bank. Let's start with uh, Colton Poole. Hey, Colton Poole. It's your uh, alumni theme going. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I was at North Dakota State a couple of years after you graduated. But, um, okay. yeah, so Colton Poole, Bozeman Chronicle, a nice to, you know, Zoom meet you. Uh, like nice I say, hopefully you. we can all meet in person sometime soon. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess kind of almost same questions here, but from a different perspective. Um, you know, Coach Vegan mentioned kind of the, the philosophies will almost kind of be pretty similar to what has been done here at MSU before. But what is your personal philosophy as a defensive coordinator now at Montana State? What, what is kind of the approach that you'll bring, you think? Um, I kind of like what they've done before. You know, I hope, I hope when you look at our defense that we're playing really, really hard and we're running to the ball and guys are having a whole lot of fun and the effort that they play with is going to be um, challenge every day and it's going to be coached hard and I think it's already been built in those guys as a great culture for those guys um, what we do 
is, is going to be simple so our guys can play really, really fast and they know exactly what they're going to do. So now we can really focus on uh, what the offense is trying to do to us and how they're trying to attack us. Um, and then I think defense is all about, you know, having fun, playing together, understanding that my job is important, everybody doing their 111. Um, a lot of things that they've already built here that we're going to, um, you know, tweak things a little bit, but, you know, a lot of, a lot of things are in place to keep that type of culture and that type of playing hard, playing fast and playing together um, uh, defense, so. And I guess for your position group specifically, you know, what do you think of that, that secondary that you've got? Obviously, you know, the last couple of years, it's been, it's been pretty successful uh, on the defensive end. So, yeah, just kind of what is your approach to that position group? In the secondary? Yeah, man, I think we got some, some, some guys that have played a lot of football. Um, Tyrell played a, lot of, played a lot of downs, played in some big games, has made some big plays. Um, Ties playing safety is going to be, I think, you know, he's an all conference caliber player. Obviously, guys got to get better and improve, but I think there are some guys that have played a lot of football that we're going to rely on and we're going to ask them to make more plays. Um, so I think we got a strong secondary and we got to bring the young guys along. We got to add depth um, and, and it's going to be competition. And with change with a new coach coming in, some guys are going to thrive, some guys are going to improve no matter what. Um, when I was a player, Brian Ward came in and I ended up being a starter. I just know that things change with with uh, with coaches. Sometimes just a, a different way of teaching a guy or a different relationship. Guys improve, and I'm hoping we have a bunch of guys do that. Um, so. And and lastly, and I asked Coach House right this too a little bit, but you know, does does that sort of similar. Uh, approach that was here before make things a little easier for you as a coach that you can kind of come in and the things that you want to prioritize are maybe a little bit aligned from what was before? Yeah, I mean, the, the culture on defense is great. It's, you know, they, they really pride themselves on stopping a run, which is the same thing we want to do. They pride themselves on eliminating explosive pass plays, ex explosive run plays, eliminating explosives, period, and then being great on third down. Um, that's really the formula for success on defense. You know, stop the run. Make sure people can't make them one-dimensional. Uh, make sure they can't run the ball when they want to. Eliminate explosive plays. Take away their best player the best way you can. And then we on third down. We get them to third down and get them off the field. And they've been doing that. We'll build on that. And I think when you take over a place, you don't come to Montana State and say we want to keep it the same. You come here and you try to improve it and get it over the top when you have uh, a basis that's been laid for you. So we're trying to uh, take big jumps. That's the goal. All right, that's all I got. Thank you. All right, thanks. All right, thanks. Nice to meet Alex you. Alex Eshelman, you're next. All right, well, Coach, first of all, congratulations. I'm Alex. I work with ABC Fox here in town. How you doing, Alex? Uh, I'm doing well. And, and yeah, congrats again. And um, so what are your first impressions of of Bozeman and the program and the school. Um, yeah, what do you think about it so far? Um, Bozeman, well, we came down, I think it's like 19th Street and 7th Street. They got a lot of restaurants and stores and Main Street. They've got things you can do. So my wife will be happy, number one. She'll be she'll be taken care of. Um, she can go, to, there's a TJ, I saw a TJ Maxx. I was like, it's unbelievable. So we're excited about that. Um, and then there's places to go eat. Um, when you come to a town and you take over a new job, you, you know, your family's not in town. So, you know, you get another coach and we go try out new restaurants and I'll try out whatever new place the coaches recommend to me each night. <laughs> um, and um, the, the city's great. The, I haven't been on campus very much, you know, uh, as far as walking around campus, we've been kind of over in, in the athletics part. Um, I'll get a chance to walk campus and get to know the buildings and get to know professors and stuff as we get moving forward. But um, I'm excited. The players are um, eager to learn what, you know, what we're going to do, what are going to be some of the changes. There are some players that are excited. You know, Coach, Coach Vegan talked about we're going to be a little more permanent four down. There are some guys that are excited about having the opportunity to rush the pass a little bit more. Um, so I think it's been great. My wife is going to love it. It's got things for her and 
It's a good town. I've been here before in 2010. I remember the fans. Um, they were not very nice at the time, which is a good thing now that I'm on your side. <laughs> so um, it's an exciting time. It's a time where the, the athletic department is growing, the football program is growing, and we got a chance to do great things. And the players are really excited about us being here. And um, that was the thing that struck me right away, that they're excited. They're in the office. They want to meet us. They want to know, hey, coach, how are you going to do this? And I'm excited. The players are going to be awesome. That's awesome. And, and uh, just in your short time of being here and moving forward prior to spring ball, how has, what's your daily routine like? What have you been kind of doing to get yourself acclimated uh, with the guys and, and the rest of the coaching staff? Yeah, number one is getting to know the players. So we've had, you know, talked to Coach Daly and we've, we were kind of on Zoom before I got here and we had a Zoom call about the personnel and what we have and how we can use our best players a little more or a little, you know, move guys around. Um, then when you, I got here and you want to meet the players is, and I really wanted to say it, stay in my office as much as I can so the players can come by and I get a chance to meet them. I called some of the guys, had a chance to talk to Chase Benson on the phone and he's excited, got to know him a little bit. You know, he's got a girlfriend. He's probably about to be married pretty soon. <laughs> um, that's a joke. He's not about to be married. So if you hear this, that's a joke, Chase. Uh, so we're, I mean, just getting to know the players is the is the priority right now and having them come around. Um, as far as staff, personnel-wise, we had a, a meeting today that went a lot longer than we thought. We're in there for about two hours just talking about different guys and what they've done and how we can help them improve and uh, maybe moving some guys around to, to get a little bit more out of them and really – honing in all right we're gonna have our defensive ends do this this and this and that's it and they can play really really fast and we're gonna have the safeties do this this and this and getting the staff on board um on what we are looking for from a recruiting standpoint and what we're looking for um in in the system that we're going to run who our key players are going to be and what are some of the most important positions that that we have so Awesome, Coach. Thank you. Congrats again. Thank you. I appreciate it. Coulter Nuanez, you're next. Hey, Coulter Nuanez from ESPN Montana as well as Skyline Sports. Uh, thanks for taking a, a minute for us. So I wanted to ask a follow-up on something you said earlier, which I thought was interesting. You mentioned uh, how there could be a lot of positives to having multiple coaches, particularly when you're talking about position coaches. And I think sometimes – there's a, a negative connotation when guys have a lot of coaches, but it seems like you can add a lot to the mix if guys have – they've learned from a lot of different teachers throughout their careers. So, I mean, do you think that that's true? Um, I could just take you back to my playing days, and I had, you know, Willie Mike Garza was my first DB coach. And then I had um, – I had Mike Bresky was the next DB coach, and then Brian Ward was the next DB coach. And all of them were different. Um, and I learned a lot and you take, you know, Willie Mack was a really great technician and you learned a lot from him about that. And he was a great teacher. And um, Mike Bresci was really good at teaching press and Brian Ward was really good at talking about uh, disguise and how we can affect the quarterback and get the quarterback to change his eyes. So it's actually helped me as a coach to learn from those guys. And I think it helps those guys in a new perspective. And sometimes a guy, there are some guys that may have been in a doghouse that may need a fresh start. Right. Uh, and it helps those guys. It's a fresh start. It's a clean slate. Uh, and hopefully those guys say, all right, it's a clean slate. Maybe maybe I wasn't playing so well. Or maybe I've, you know, underachieved. Well, you got a chance to achieve high and achieve your goal. So um, I've seen it happen everywhere I go. There's a guy in the room that, you get there and man, he really hasn't been what we thought he was going to be. And he ends up being a player and it's been really, really good. So you come in with a fresh mind and I watch film on the guys just to see him move around, but it's a clean slate for those guys. You mentioned coach Bresky. That's interesting. Full my brother actually played for coach Bresky once upon a time as well, but uh, will you reach out to him? Cause he's a guy that has a lot of connections within this league. I know he's on the opponent's sideline sometimes at the university of Idaho now, but I mean, how much – is he an influence of yours defensively? Yeah, I mean, I, I spent a small time with Coach Bresky. Sure. Um, he was he was at North Dakota State for one year. So, sure, I mean, you can learn a lot from, from a lot of people. 
but the big influences for me, Scotty Hazelton, who was the defensive coordinator, he's had a, a major influence on my, you know, what I believe in and and uh, and, and what I've learned. Um, Brian Ward, um, uh, Willie Mack Garza, um, Jake Dicker, uh, AJ Cooper, a lot of those guys, um, I've really stolen bits and pieces from them and kind of created my own kind of deal. So um, a lot of guys have, have influenced me. And um, so it'll, it's, you, nobody really um, makes something up themselves. You all kind of right. steal from somebody and I've stolen bits and pieces from a lot of people <laughs> and uh, kind of made it my own. And I think it'll be fun. The fact that you're taking over now this job. And uh, I mean, I'll give you my opinion. I think you guys got the best front seven in the big sky conference. So that has to, uh, that has to be pretty appealing as a defensive yep. coordinator. Oh yeah. Well, it starts up front. If you want to, you got to stop the run. Everybody, everybody in the country wants to run the ball. Even the air raid teams, if they can run the ball, they're going to run the ball. We got to be able to stop the run. And we're in a league where they want to run the ball. We got to stop it. Um, if you do that, you make teams one-dimensional. And now you got um, Madre and Hardy and pass rushers that can go get after the quarterback. We got it. We got. We got a front seven that that is going to have an opportunity to do really good things up front, stop the run, and get them a chance rushing the passer. We're going. I'm excited. Um, I'm ready to jump out of my seat right now. So we get. They built a really good roster and handed it over to us, and it's our job to make it work. Last question for me. i got to ask you the obligatory Troy Anderson question. So I know there's been quite the fight between the uh, coordinators of Montana State the last couple of years, which side of the ball he's going to play. But, I mean, presuming he's going to play some defense at least, what do you think of his talent and the, the weapon that he might be for you? Troy, I wish you could have sat in the meeting today. We got coaches fighting over him. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, Daly told me he might be the fastest guy on the team. They told me he was a freaking first team all conference as the quarterback. I mean, as a we, sophomore, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he'll have a role on our defense. <laughs> <laughs> we just got to figure out who's who's going to win the fight over him to keep him. So they're excited about. I mean, we're. I mean, he's he's a guy that that we're going to use utilize um, probably in a couple of different ways because he's he understands football. A guy that can go back there and take snaps. He understands football, um, so we're 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 really excited about him. I wish you could have sat in on that meeting today. You you see the real excitement in that staff room. So uh, and actually, we'll have, have one more we'll question. Have a, yeah, for him. yeah, yeah. Well, you mentioned Bobby Daly. I got to ask one more question about Bobby. Then uh, the fact that he's a guy that has such institutional knowledge at Montana State has you know played here and and has been around the program for so long. I mean, how much will you lean on him just in terms of kind of learning the ropes of what Montana State's all about? Yeah, you never know how guys are going to respond to a new coordinator coming in and you're kind of changing some things and they've been successful, but he's been like the best. He's been, he's a, number one, he's an awesome dude just to hang out with and to talk to. And he's a, we, we talked about some install stuff and talk ball. It's very clear that he's a really good football coach. So I got a feeling our linebacker is going to continue to be really, really good. And, um, and he loves ball, and we got a lot in common. So I'll lean on him a bunch just on, hey, what do you think here? Hey, what have you guys done that we can add that's similar to what we do, but it'll fit? Um, and he knows the personnel better than anybody. Him and Kyle, they, you know, hey, this guy kind of fits this. This is what we're looking for. All right, he's done this, this, and this. We can, we can utilize him this way. Or this guy, all right, you asking him to do that? That's probably not the best for him because of these reasons. So uh, we're definitely leaning on leaning on him a bunch. And he's awesome dude. You never know how guys are gonna respond to a new guy coming in. And he's been awesome. And I anticipate him being awesome the whole way through. So. Thanks coach. Appreciate you. John Miller, your turn. Hey coach, John Miller with KBZK. Can you touch on the, the hiring of uh, Coach Howell and what he brings to the staff and the defensive line? Well, number one, Coach Howell is a guy that actually worked under Scotty Hazelton at, when he was at USC. Um, so that's how that connection happened. Kind of come from the same family of coaches. I can tell you what, he is an energetic, um, 100 miles per hour guy. And that's in the office. So 
I can't imagine what's going to happen when we start practicing. So he's a fun guy to be around. We talk ball, really good football coach. Um, he knows what he's talking about. He knows what it looks like. He's been at a really high level of football, um, which benefits you coming down. Um, he's 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 going to be great. So, Thanks, Coach. Welcome to Bozeman. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Eddie Messel, go ahead. Hey, Coach, Eddie Messel uh, with NBC Montana here in Bozeman. Uh, same question, just on the opposite side. I know, have you gotten to speak with any of the new incoming recruits um, in the 2021 class on the defensive side? Um, maybe ease their mind a little bit. I know this is kind of a weird time for them, too. Yeah, I started, I actually recruited um, Woodard, Simon Woodard, when I was at Nevada. And we ended up not taking him. So as soon as it came out, he shot me a text like, Coach, you, gonna, you know, we're going to be working together. So I'm in the process of calling all those guys. I know Coach Vegan has talked to him. And I'll get it, you know, I want to get – I've been spending all my time getting to know the players on campus, and I'll spend some time at night calling some of those guys. But uh, a couple of them, I, I had a chance to to recruit a little bit while I was at Nevada, so they did a good job here. Oh, I'm good. Thanks, Coach. All right. Hey, thank you. Uh, John Miller, do you have another one? Or? Oh, I don't. I forgot to lower my hand. Okay. Ashley Washburn, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Ashley Washburn with KBZK. Um, we had asked House to write this question earlier, but obviously, since you're a former player at NDSU, you've heard of the Cat Grizz rivalry. So how excited are you kind of to coach in that? And what's your just initial, uh, just how excited are you as a coach just to have that, um, that rivalry? Because it's kind of a Cat Grizz rivalry every single day of yeah. being a better team. It is. You want to beat them in everything. You want to beat them in recruiting. You want to beat them in how you work every day. You want to beat them when we're in the office and we're game planning. You want to beat them in everything that we do. Um, and I think that carries over to how you play just that one Saturday out the year, which is a big, a big time game. And the great thing about it is those type of games, you don't have to get your players up. They're ready to go. Uh, I've, I've been a part of rivalries. I'll learn about this rivalry, but I'm, I understand um, what it means and uh, it'll be exciting the players will be ready and it comes down to winning every single day to beat them uh, out hustling those guys so uh, we don't want to lose anything to them absolutely thanks coach welcome to Bozeman thank you I appreciate it Colton Poole you have more yeah, just one more. You know, you mentioned the maybe wanting to go more with four down linemen. I'm wondering if you can elaborate more on that kind of your approach to wanting to do that more like where, where MSU is more multi front and maybe how you'll approach that uh, the four down linemen. Yeah, just philosophy wise, we like, you know, guys to really zero in on only doing a couple things and not saying it is right or wrong. That's just you know, my philosophy on, you know, having to, you know, a guy like Andre being able to read the tackle and either it's run or it's pat, either you're rushing the pass or you're stopping the run. So having them do less, which I think you'll get more out of them. That's kind of the approach. Um, making their jobs really, really simple. So now you can utilize his skill set a little bit more. Um, and I think he was utilized, you know, being a stand-up backer as, as the buck to the boundary and doing that stuff. Uh, but just different philosophies. Um, he was a really good football player. I'm using him as, as an example, but um, just different different philosophies on just making things simple for the guys so they can play fast and um, just makes it easier for them. All right, that's all I got.